إِهِكُمْ All of you, azwajin, this is hard. In the state of pairs, you didn't pair yourselves. You didn't create a pair, you didn't create woman, man didn't create woman, woman didn't create man. We created you like this. This is not your own manufacturing. This is being given to you. You're not even capable over your own creation. Your own gender you're not capable over. Your own spouse you're not capable over, the spouses that you've been created in. So you've been created in two different genders. And this is again, the creative power of Allah, as manifest even on the rebel himself, the kafir himself who's listening to this. He knows even that I've been created in pairs and I'm not the one who was in charge of this. I didn't design this myself. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla goes forward and goes eat to the person himself. He says, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ subata," And we made your, your sleep. Naum is sleep, deep sleep. You know how Allah says in Ayatul Kursi, لَا تَأْخُذُهُ سِنَةٌ وَلَا نَوْمٌ Sina is slumber, like sleepiness, drowsiness, and naum is deep sleep. Right? So Allah says, He made your deep sleep subata. Now, sabata sha'rahu, for example, a phrase in Arabic means the person cut off his, a lock of his hair. Okay? Or if you say sabata sayra, when you cut the string. Literally, this subat means that which is, that cuts off. It cuts off. So Allah speaks of night as something that cuts you off. What does it cut you off from? First of all, it cuts your body off from what? Your soul. Your soul departs from your body. Right? You're not in charge of this. It's, it leaves you and you're not in charge of it. Then it cuts you off from your daily affairs, your work, your business, your, your, your concerns, your tasks. Everything is cut off. You're cut off from your family. You're cut off from your affairs. You're cut off from everything in life as soon as you hit deep sleep. It's like you're dead to the world. You don't exist for those few hours. Nothing you do matters at that point. Because you're not relevant to the world when you are asleep. You're cut off. You're cut off. And this is actually very important because it's a foreshadowing of what Allah will talk about in a little bit that's coming in the surah, which is Resurrection Day. And because on Resurrection Day, one of the most essential features of Resurrection Day is all human beings will be cut off. They will be cut off from one another. The way that is depicted in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azza wa says, وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ All of their relationships will be chopped off. And in the surahs that are coming, we will read, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ The man will learn, run away from his brother, from his mother, from his father, right? وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ Similarly, we found in Surah Al-Ma'arij before, a similar passage. So, this is the kind of cutting off that will be permanent, that is going to be mentioned a little bit later on. But you experience something from that being cut off every single day, you can't even help your sleep. You can't go, no matter how long you try to avoid your sleep, in the end you will be overpowered by it. And this is a power Allah has on even the one who disbelieves. Even the one who denies Allah. Even the one who doesn't believe in the hereafter. So this is actually the argumentation, the flow of argument. The logic here is, you are so adamant in disbelieving in the hereafter because you think it's so impossible. Here are the powers Allah has on you. Here are the powers that you see manifested in Allah and in the creation around you. Are you in denial of those powers? And you think the one who created all of these things and is so much control even on your own self, your own body, that you have to go to sleep every night or every few hours, that that one doesn't have the power to create life again? Anyhow, so let's go further, inshallah ta'ala, because we're running out of time. وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتًا وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا And we made the night a means of garment. We made the night a garment. Now why, why, is, the night, why is the night called a garment? Because it, the idea is it covers you up. It takes over you like a blanket. And the garment is something you hide underneath. And you know people hide in the night. Crimes take place in the night. Secrets are associated with the night. Ambush is associated with the night. Robbery is associated with the night. Right? These are the things that are associated with night because it's secrecy. But the other thing here that's, that's illustrated is this is a libas, this is a cloth that is put on you that you don't have the power to take off. You're not, you're not capable of getting rid of the night. You can turn the light off in this room, but that doesn't get rid of the night. The night has overcome everyone, like the day overcomes everyone. So Allah Azza wa Jal made the night manifest over you. Another means by which the creation of Allah overpowers all of the creations on the earth, the night. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa. وَجَعَلْنَا nahara ma'asha. And we made the, the daytime, this word ma'ash, it could be laf zaman, it could be an adverbial you know, uh, phrase or, or, or a, a noun depicting time or space. Literally here, time. And it could be uh, an infinitive, what's called a masdar. And we'll talk about what that means in the ayah. وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشَ And we made the bright day, the morning time, or the daytime, a means of livelihood and a time of livelihood. These are the two implications of ma'ash. That the, the, the daytime is a means by which people 
uh, earn their, their income. And this is particularly true in the desert because in the, there are very few patches of desert where there's actually farmland. And those are the critical aspects of desert life because that's where the you know, food from, for the entire region is coming. And that food will not grow until it gets what? Sunlight. So the daytime is a means by which life is delivered. And then also this is the time in which business takes place and most work takes place. It's in the daytime. Even today in the most modern of times, the stock market opens up in the morning and closes at night. It's, it's the, you know, when you get a job, it's, you know, the, the normal average job for people is in the night shift, it's the day shift. Most people work in the day. So this is the time for which it, uh, that is stalled for earning one's income and getting ma'ash, a means of livelihood. Then Allah speaks finally, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا And we, we constructed, built above you, سَبْعًا شِدَادًا And فَوْقَكُمْ here, you know, if you look at the other ayat that just came, in all of them there was some uh, implication, if not direct, indirect of the human being. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa. We made the, the, the night as a means of garment. Garment for who? For us. A means of earning uh, the day, a means of earning wealth or earning livelihood for who? For ourselves. So this all, it always comes back to us and our powerlessness over even the creations of Allah and how dependent we are over other things that Allah has created for us. So now again, here, وَبَنَيْنَا Allah didn't just say, وَبَنَيْنَا سَبْعًا شِدَادًا We constructed seven intense skies or seven intense powerful flawless heavens. Rather He added, فَوْقَكُمْ We constructed above you. We constructed above you these seven heavens. And this, this bina, this construction, the idea of construction, again a comparison to human ability. Human beings construct things too. Now compare whatever you've been able to construct as human beings to what Allah has constructed. Sab'an shidada, subhanAllah. See, this constantly we're being put in our place. The idea of the whole, these arguments is the human beings being put in their place. You don't, you don't deserve to be talking like this about the hereafter. You need to know your role. You need to know how meek, how powerless you really are. So, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا shidada. And then on top of this, وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَحَاجَ And then we installed siraj. Siraj in Arabic, majazan, in allegory or implied, it refers to anything that emits light or anything that is lit. But in the Qur'an, consistently it is used to refer to the sun. Then we add, to, add this to the word ism mubalagha, it's called wahaja. Wahaj is actually from wahaja yahaju wahjun, this is the, the, the base meaning. Something that is brilliant and blazing. And then add to it wahaj, the, the form that's used in Arabic is that which hyperbolizes. So an incredibly brilliant, blazing lamp we installed for you. So of all the things, all the fires you're going to be able to kindle on the earth, all the chandeliers you'll be able to create, what is going to compare? What is going to compare to this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Again, an illustration of the powerlessness of the human being. At the same time, an illustration of the creative power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَا أَنْ فَجَّجَ This is a very beautiful ayah of the creative power of Allah. He says, and we sent down مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ you know, a'sara in Arabic, or i'sar, the masdar, is it means to squeeze, to squeeze. And this is referring, one opinion is, this is referring to the winds. The winds come, and they literally squeeze the clouds, and then the clouds get, drip what? Rain. So that's one image that's being presented, that the winds, they end up squeezing the clouds. Like, an i'sar is used in classical Arabic for a cloth that is drenched, and you know, you twist it, and you squeeze it, and water comes out. Also, i'sar is used for the clouds that are full of water that can't hold anymore and end up dripping. So these are the two implications that we sent by means of the mu'asirat, by means of these squeezed, or the clouds that get squeezed by winds, or the clouds that are drenched in, in water. Ma and thajjaja, water that is thajjaj. Thaj, literally, it means overflowed or heavy, profuse kind of rain or flooding. So we sent this intense kind of water supply that again human beings can't compare to. Rather we know that water is a means by which human beings are either overpowered, either by the overflow of it or by the lack of it. When Allah doesn't send it, it can create death and famine. And when Allah sends too much of it, it can create death and famine, or death and destruction, right? Flooding. So Allah Azza wa Jalla again illustrating His power over the human being. And now you will find a, a, a change in tone of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how, how many favors He has given to you. So we may derive or ex, you know, extract by means of it, the he here, the lamid referring to ma, to water. So by, by means of the water, so that we may 
um, extract. Habban wa nabata. Habban is used for all kinds of grain, all kinds of wheat, all kinds of crop. And nabat is used for all kinds of grass or vegetation. So all kinds of, basically the sustenance of this earth. The earth, if, if not for vegetation, if not for, for plant life, then there is no earth, life on this earth. Because whatever we consume in the end, consumes plant life. Right? So anyway, لِيُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا وَجَنَّاتٍ أَلْفَافًا And above and beyond that, jannat specifically, lush gardens. Alfaf is the plural, it could be argued of lafif, though there are other opinions also. Lafif means that which is wrapped around. So the idea is gardens in which the trees and the branches and, the, and you know, these, these plants, they are intertwined among each other. They're so intricately connected to each other. It seems like they're tangled among each other. This is what Jannatin al Fafa. Plants so close together and so lush that you can't tell where one ends and the other begins. Right? That's Jannatin al Fafa. That's the imagery that's been presented. Now, after all of this explanation of creative powers, this was the second paragraph, by the way, the second lesson of the surah, to compare human ability or human inability to the creative power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, go back to the first paragraph, what was the whole problem? The whole problem was a denial of the hereafter. So now it's coming back to that problem. Now that you've been put in your place, now we can talk about that which you were asking about and being sarcastic about. Allah Azza wa says, Inna yawm al-fasli kana miqata. No doubt, the day of al-fasl. Al-fasl in Arabic is to take, fasl literally means to take two things that are together and to separate them so much that they're clearly apart from one another. And this is one of the descriptions of the Day of Judgment. The ulama comment that it's called Yawm al-Fasl, the Day of Separation, or the Day of Clear Distinction, because for one, on that day, truth will be separated from falsehood. And in this dunya, people say some truth and mix it with some falsehood. This is what the mushrik did. He, it's, like, it's not like he said, I'm not going to believe in Allah. He believed in Allah and other things with Allah. Right? So and the people even who do bad, they say at least we're doing some other good. They mix good with evil. They mix truth with falsehood. This is a day when all of this will be separated. A person will be separated from his false hope. A worshipper will be fa- separated from his false gods and the hopes that he placed in them. A tyrant will be separated from his power. Right? All of these things that, we, that are together now will be separated. Allah Azza wa speaks in Baqarah about followers being separated from their leaders. Right? The people, if the barra al-ladina tubi'u min al-ladina taba'u, the people who used to be followed will disassociate themselves with the people who used to follow them. Right? So anybody who used to follow trends of, you know, nowadays are kids or whoever they're following the trends of their friends in school or celebrities on TV and things like that, on that day they will want nothing to do with their fan base. They'll walk away from them. I want no- nothing to do with them. That's their own doing. I have nothing to do with them. So, and, and similarly, the elders, we follow sometimes our family traditions. We'll go into haram to keep up with family tradition. Because our, you know, our family does things this way. That's why we have to do it this way. On that day, none of this will matter. Your uncle or your grandfather or your cousin for whom you wanted to show your face and, and engage in riba or do this haram business or have that inappropriate gathering, they won't care for you on that day. They'll walk away. They'll walk right off. So anyway, in yawm al-fasli kana miqata, and probably perhaps the most graphic depiction of that fasl that Allah Azza wa Jalla describes is that on that day the mother will be separated from uh, her child. Right? That's the probably the most graphic description of al-fasl on that day. May Allah save us on that day. Al-Fayl, inshallah ta'ala, we'll, we'll try and close with this ayah because it's almost time for salah, right? So I'm going to wrap some, uh, some things up about this ayah and we'll conclude. Bi-idhnillah. Allah says, inna yawm al-fasli kana miqata. The day, this day of separation, this day of parting, this day of clear distinction between two things had already been appointed. Miqat is what's called Dharf Zaman. This time had, was bound to come. It was a fixed time. It was like clockwork. It had to happen. Right? Like the, the hour has to strike. You know, if you notice all the things, or many of the things that Allah spoke about, the, the creation of pears, the growing of plants, the sun, right, the night and the day, things that have a fixed time. Things that have a, an appropriate time for them. Just like that, this life also has a zawj. It's paired with something. What is it paired with? It's paired with the next life. It's got a time too. It's just, you know, just like regularly you expect the season to change, or you expect the afternoon to change into the evening, the evening to the night, the night to the morning. Just like that, expect. It is appointed, it is fixed, that this time has to come. It is just, we're headed towards that direction. Whether you like it or not,